I've grouped six brand professionals to talk about brand creator partnerships and we are covering the FTX downfall, Kendall Jenner's infamous Pepsi commercial, Kanye West and Adidas billion dollar breakup, and the rise of a new small company in New York that's challenging the way every business operates. Let's get right into it. Yeah, nice to meet you. So when I was thinking about what topic would be great for the first day, I was like, well, we don't know each other yet. So what do we talk about that is going to be relevant to everyone? And I was like, let's talk about Bitcoin. So <laughs> it's been a, a bit like messy last 10 days with Bitcoin and crypto and the whole FTX shit show basically ftx one of the biggest exchanges in the world um after binance went down basically filed bankruptcy and it's gone down the reason why we're talking about this is because i've been observing a, a very interesting situation where like i follow a couple of um like finance youtubers and um, they've been promoting the shit out of FTX for the last year. So if you follow any finance YouTuber, you've probably seen someone talking about FTX. So when all of this went down big time last week, some of these creators that have been promoting FTX on their YouTube channels and whatnot um, show up to apologize. And some others didn't apologize, which to me is kind of shocking. I've always been completely transparent about everything I do here on the channel and everything involving personal finance. So I feel like I owe it to you to explain the situation and what's going on. As much as I trusted the information that I was given, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I do my best to research and bet everything that comes my way. And this one, I did not see coming. And um, watching for more videos like that, I found this one from a different creator um that explain very well why this is relevant and interesting from a branding and creator perspective and when those projects fail or the prices go down who wins and who loses of course in any buy or sell 50 percent of the people win 50 percent lose but that 50 percent who win in this case is tilted heavily towards one specific group i know what you're thinking you think it's the youtubers you think it's the influencers no it's the founders of those projects. It's the teams looking to get the promotion done because it's the perfect setup. They do a promotion and a video comes out, awareness gets brought to the project, they may do several videos in one day, and then all of a sudden awareness and people get excited and they start buying this token and the price goes up. Just enough for the founders to cash out. But guess who's left holding the bag? The person that did the video because we are the front facing person. So I think this explains very well the whole relationship between creators and brands. And I think it's also very obvious when you think about it, how these dynamics work in the front, in the eyes of the audiences. But I feel like, I like to say a lot um, that brands are like people. When I have a question about how should we do this from a branding perspective? I'm like, how would I do it if like it was happening to me, right? So this whole situation is like, imagine I introduce you someone that is my friend and that is really good at a problem you're facing and be like, oh, they'll help you. And so you start talking and then, you know, half a year, one year down the line, this person really fucks you up, like screw you over. I'm like, I've, of course I didn't do anything, but at the end of the day, like you trusted me and I, I put this person in your life and end up in a very poor outcome. You're going to have certain feelings for me, even though I didn't do anything. And I feel like that's what's happening in this like triangle. This is a very like good example. Um, are you familiar with this ad campaign? This was a very big, big fucked up commercial that was aired um, a few years ago and that had Kendall Jenner as the main character and it was a protest and this all by the way happened during Black Lives Matters protest so it was fucked up she kind of like appears with a Pepsi and like try to like make peace between the cops and the protesters by offering a Pepsi like this iconic moment of like the flower <laughs> at some like protest in the 70s 60s it doesn't make any sense when I'm explaining to you and it doesn't make any sense when you watch it, but apparently some white dudes in a boardroom um, decided that it made sense um, and they did it. What happened here is like Pepsi was dramatically criticized and obviously Kendall Jenner got all the hit because it's her face. Is she doing it? 
Um, and even though she didn't have the idea, she didn't have their script. Yeah, it's your face. This is so important as a topic because if you're running a business or if you're running a brand at some point, or if you're a creator, at some point, you're going to get a brand deal that you want to do with a creator or that a creator wants like the other way around. So when the creator or the art is really fucked up and now you have a PR problem as a brand, right? So it can happen both ways. When this happens, is it more painful for brands or for creators? So from my perspective, I would say it's more painful for the brands because uh, I think for creators, creators are resp not responsible, but creators are sharing things that represent them. Whereas the brand, it's more about um, the brand is already pushing a sort of identity and, uh, you know, you want to be trustful and all these things. But, and then when you share a creator, it is just to get in touch with their target audience and everything. So I would, I would, yeah, I would say it's more for the brands. I hope somebody can help me extend on this because I just need more words to get th this idea out of my brain. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to help either <laughs> with this, but I think <laughs> from my perspective, I see businesses and brands as a whole system, like an organism. So I think depending on the situation could be both mm, affected. Um, and depending the context, maybe like the balance is more into the business, like in the core business uh, or operations. Uh, and in other, in other way, it could be more to the creator. I think depends. <laughs> maybe it's not it a clear answer, but I think it's, it's okay. It's it good. could be really organic. I mean, it's truly painful for both sides, but uh, I'm looking at it from a, I guess it's more from a, selfish side but if, if something like that were to happen to me i'd feel like i'd be in more pain because all my followers follow me for me right and like now i just introduce them to this brand um that just screw them over so i'm like damn you know i'm caught with my pants uh, down because i'm just one person as a creator you're one person but as a brand you know you, know, you got a whole team you, you can kind of like leave the leverage I mean, leave the responsibility of like, no, it was this person, that person, or it was mainly this team and this, you know, there's no really full responsibility. I feel like as a brand, you can spread and you can spread the pain, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a whole company, but as a creator, as a single entity, or maybe a, a couple people, um, it hits more. Mm, I think it's more painful for the brands because brands live forever. It's not like today we are, cre as a creator, or as an artist, you are there for some time and Tomorrow you might not be there, but when you look at the brands, uh, let's say Coke, which has been here for decades. So uh, once a brand goes down, I think a lot of people are going down with it. You have a good point there. Like brands do um, have sometimes a lot of people involved and a lot of like people with their families and like kids and whatnot. And like, that's a lot of like, that's a massive responsibility. Creator brands are also coming in strong. So the Mr. Beast burgers of the world and the festivals and all of that are, are also brands. And like, that's also like a very interesting relationship when, when brands have CEOs that behave like creators or that are literally creators, like in the case of Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, like all these new era of creators, but also, um, CEOs like Elon Musk that all of a sudden are also creators on Twitter. I actually think it depends on the which stage of the life cycle each one of them could be at, if that makes sense. Um, I, you know, for a brand like Adidas, yes, they've taken a temporary hit, but for a consumer, I think that because they've got such a long history behind them and um, the messaging has been so strong uh, that, you know, I think consumers can be forgiving. Uh, and they can actually weigh up, or oh, this could be, you know, a short term thing and actually take into um, consideration the entire reputation of the brand or a long term reputation of the brand before, you know, abandoning it. And I think the same applies with a creator. When people say branding, a lot of people think logo, watermark, like the colors and like this shit, but actually none of these matters in a situation like this. And it's actually like, how do you respond the first hour, the first two hours that's actually going to make people feel in a way or another. Um, at the start of the year when the whole crypto hype was happening and uh, we were reaching out to 
creators or to um, NFT collection creators as uh, designers to help out with their projects uh, in terms of their web presence. And we did our due diligence and one of the projects just went busted, but the guy actually disappeared and <laughs> the project went Gosh. nowhere. Yeah, uh, they didn't sell out and everyone was doxxed. So it means that everyone knew who we were in real life. And what happened is uh, people started asking us on Discord, like the designers on Discord, like what's going on? Was the leader of this project? And we're like, we're in the dark. We actually don't know what's going on. And somebody reached out to me on LinkedIn and just left a comment in one of my posts saying that I was stealing from people and these people, they just, they, yeah, like it went really far. And I reached out to that person and said, I explained the whole thing to them. And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to block you because, you know, um, I have nothing to do with what happened. So in that case, the reason why I'm um, sharing this example is because, that's, because in that case, the brand's still there to a degree, but the the owner of the brand just flee, disappeared, and then he left behind the whole team and didn't pay some of the staff members either. So um, I think the creators or the individuals like myself, we really took a hit there. Um, so yeah, it, it, it depends. Like um, one of you was saying, it depends on which part of the journey everyone is. Thanks so much for sharing this. It's really, it's, I appreciate you sharing this because like it might have been like a very challenging time for you. And so you sharing this and like sharing these insights with the group means a lot to me. Um, but it's true. And I feel like in the whole Web3 context, there's so much to talk about this. Um, and I feel like um, one of the sessions or a very few, like a few sessions are going to actually be on the framework of Web3. And I know you've been involved in that. So I feel like we're going to bring more of that um, to the group. I'm going to give you a... Um, a final example on how this can actually be implemented. They'll still come in it and then we'll let you go. So basically, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's this company called Free Water. It's the first free beverage company in the world. They're in New York. And basically what they're doing is they're giving away water and the bottle is used as advertisement space and the, the advertiser are paying for the whole thing. So this is very innovative when it, when you think about like beverages or food or something like that. But we've been seeing like this for ages on like Spotify works like this, like every other like tech company works like this or social media platform. But it's very like innovative and refreshing <laughs> um, to see it on a product. So why do I share this? Because I was looking at this and there's a small group, like they're just giving away waters like in like small batches. So it's not a massive big company that's everywhere and that has like a full system. But I, what I realized is like, okay, so if I'm an advertiser and I'm not in New York, why would I want to like pay for this, right? And I realized that because of this whole 10 cents thing, it's not just the amount of people that you can reach, it's the meaning of each interaction. So in this case, if you're an advertiser, you put your ad in this bottle, you're getting associated with innovation, you're getting associated with... Um, like giving away and caring for the planet and for like equality in the world. So it's an interesting example where brand affinity and brand association is related to the value and the meaning and not just the numbers. And so I wanted to finish with that. Hey, I want you to come back for the next episode. So I'm letting you pick the topic. Scan this QR code right here or click in the link below to select one of these five themes. And if the episode has come out already, click here to watch it and subscribe so you can vote for the next one. Bye.